Welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today I thought I'd show you how to create cute little gift bags from envelopes. This is something folks have been doing for years, but I hadn't shared it in a video lately, so I thought I'd do so today. I'm also going to show you how to get colorful coloring on craft cardstock with colored pencils. This is one of my favorite ways to color. It's so rewarding. And I'm using some fun new products that I wanted to show you. These stamped images are from Neat and Tangled. Here's the stamp set. This is exclusive for Simon Says Stamp as part of Stamp Timber, and I just adore this set. I believe it's limited quantities. I am inking it up with Hero Arts Black Ink, and I'm going to stamp it onto some Ranger Craft cardstock, and then also onto a piece of Inka Dinka Do masking paper, because I need to mask his little paws so that he can be holding a heart. I'm also stamping a few other pieces on the craft cardstock so that I can create two projects. So here I'm cutting the mask. I just am cutting around his arms. I just need the arms uh, mask so I can create a little heart that looks like he's holding a tiny little heart. So after I have that cut out, I'm just gonna peel off the backing and stick it right onto our craft image here. And then I can stamp the heart over it. You could use any black ink for this. It really doesn't matter at all. Any craft cardstock would work well also. Okay, so I'm coming in with some colored pencils. These are Prismacolor colored pencils, but you could probably use any. And I'm first putting down like a light coat with a super light yellow. Then I'm gonna start building color on top of it. This makes it look like the color is kind of glowing on top of the cardstock. So you can see I'm building up to the darker colors. I also am scribbling up and down over the image because I wanna kind of show the grain of the acorn there, but you can smooth it out if you want to. So you see I started with the super light color and I'm building up to a darker brown. I wanna kind of have it look highlighted there in the center. The key to this is to stack as much color as you can on top of each other. So it's a heavy kind of smooth layer over the entire piece and that allows the color to shine. Now up towards the top, I'm starting out with dark first and then adding lighter onto that because I need this to end up looking a little bit darker than the bottom. So I went with a dark brown first, now a medium brown, and then I came in with a yellow to add some bright color to it also. Now this is the most important part of the coloring. You wanna come in with a super light color or a white colored pencil and add highlights here and there. This really makes it pop against that craft background. Okay, so here I'm coloring the squirrel. Again, I'm starting with the lightest color and kind of building up color from here. You can mix any colors you want together, put a little gray in there, a little brown, and come up with whatever you want. That's the great thing about colored pencils is you can kind of stack the colors on top of each other and get incredible blending without much effort. Now on the green leaf here, I started with dark, working out to softer, and then check it out, I come in with a super light green and just add quick highlights around the edges just so that it kind of stands out a little more. So when doing the coloring on colored pencils, I usually start with light and build up to dark so that it stands out more, but you can go in the reverse order if you want a darker coloring. It really is up to you. But coming in with that lighter color at the end just to give little highlights towards the edges really makes a big difference. Another thing that makes a huge difference is to go back with a black pen, a permanent pen, and trace your black lines because you cover up some of that black ink with your colored pencils. You could also instead stamp directly on top of it after you've colored in the exact same position, maybe using a Misty or another stamp positioner, but I just decided to trace it today. Okay, so now it's time to create our adorable little gift bags out of envelopes. You can do this with any size envelope. I'm starting with four and a quarter by five and a half inch envelopes. The, actually, it's a little bit bigger than that. That's the size card it holds, but these are from Simon Says Stamp. So I have this background from Simon Says Stamp also. It has a bunch of different messages about how great you are. I thought that'd be fun on the background here. I'm inking it up with Versamark ink, and I'm stamping this onto a vellum envelope. This is new from Simon Says Stamp. I love vellum envelopes because you can see the card when the person gets it in the mail. But today I'm going to use it to make a gift bag. So I'm stamping with Versamark ink on it, and then I'm going to add Hero Arts white embossing powder. Once I've covered this, I went ahead and heat set it so we have a nice bright white stamped image. I repeated the same process and white heat embossed the background stamp on the back of the envelope also. You can see how bright white that is on the vellum. Now with a white envelope for the other project, I'm stamping the same background with Hero Arts soft brown ink. I'm going to stamp it onto the front of the envelope, and then I'll repeat the process and stamp it on the back of the envelope. 
This is a great way to use those background stamps to create a little bit of interest onto the background of the gift bag that we're creating. Next, it's time to seal the envelope close. And instead of just sealing it how you normally would an envelope, I like to really secure it and put extra adhesive on all the edges of the flap so that when it's closed, it's nice and secure since we're going to turn this into a gift bag. Now on the vellum, I decided to use double-sided tape so it doesn't show through as much. A little bit will show through, but since this will be a gift bag, I don't think people would notice too much. So what we have now is two envelopes that are sealed and stamped on both sides. Now it's time to turn it into a gift bag. The first thing you need to do is cut one end off, just a little bit so that it's open on one end. And I'm going to do this on both of my envelopes. Now it's time to do the scoring to turn it into a gift bag. What I'm going to do here is on the other three edges, not the one where we cut it open, but the other three edges, I'm gonna score an equal amount in from the edge. I decided to do three quarters of an inch on this one. So I'm scoring three quarters of an inch in from the three edges that don't have, that I didn't cut the edge of. So this will help us to form the bag. So now I'm going to just use my fingers to fold back and forth these three score lines. This, by doing this, you really help to enforce those score lines and it helps in forming the bag. Remember that one side we didn't score is open. I'm gonna put my hand in that open edge and I'm just gonna start pressing the bottom in. Pressing that in and you'll see it just kind of pops into place. And soon it'll look kind of like an owl with these two little ears sticking up. Those little ears you wanna pinch and they turn into tiny little triangles. And you can see your bag is starting to be formed here. So I'm just going through and just kind of reinforcing all the edges with my fingers and then folding those little triangles in. That will be the bottom of our gift bag. So we need to adhere those little triangles into the bottom. I think it's important to use something super strong here. So I'm using my double-sided Be Creative tape and putting some adhesive on that tiny little triangle flap. It's kind of tricky to do this here. Once I have that covered with strong adhesive, I'm going to fold it into the bottom of the bag and I'll put my hand inside the bag to help press it towards that bottom. We really wanna make sure that is secure there. I'm going to repeat the same thing with that other little triangle that is sticking out there. You could use any strong adhesive for this, but I really think a double-sided tape is super strong. So I'm doing the same here to that other little triangle and check it out, we have a cute little bag formed here. Now you can vary the size of your little gift bag by varying the size of the envelope that you use or the amount that you score in from the edge. And I'll show you another example here in a moment. Now you could do fun things to kind of finish off the top of the bag. I usually like to leave it open or just fold the top over a little bit, but you could punch two holes and like uh, string a ribbon through it and tie it in a bow. You can do all kinds of fun things to the top of that gift bag. I think this is perfect size to maybe give a little stamp to somebody or a little piece of jewelry or some candy or something like that. Now here's the vellum gift bag. This time I'm gonna score in uh, about a half inch from the edges. So you'll see I'm scoring it in a little bit less at a half inch from the three edges that we did not cut. So this will give us a different size bag. You can score in as much as you want from the edge as long as you do all three sides the same amount. So here I'm just putting my hand in the inside and starting to form this into a bag just like we did the other one. I put adhesive on those little flaps to keep it closed. And you'll see that this one's a little bit wider, but not as deep as the other. So it's just another way to kind of change the size of the gift bag that you make by changing how much you score from the inside edge. So now it's time to decorate our envelopes. I have my cute little images that I colored from earlier, but I also need a sentiment and I decided to put thankful on here with using this new Simons's stamp die. I want to do this from black cardstock, but I didn't want to have to fuss with adhering it. So I'm putting stick it double sided adhesive on the back side of my black cardstock. After running that through my die cut machine, I have a black cardstock die cut that has adhesive on the back already. I'm using some double sided adhesive on the back of our little color pieces. I'm going to stick that on to the front of our little gift bag envelopes. And then it's time to add that little sentiment. Now for this stick it, what's really important is that you remove the release paper, stick it onto your project, and it will move around a little bit. You can kind of, kind of fiddle with it a little bit to get the positioning just right. It won't secure until you really press it down, maybe with a bone folder or press really firmly with your fingers. I'm going to take an ink pad and stick that inside so I have something firm to press down on. You can even use a bone folder to really press it in place. You wanna make sure that you secure that really well, and then it will stay put. 
Okay, now I have the other little gift bag here. This is the white one. I am going to score that about oh, a quarter of an inch from the top edge so that it's folded over. So it looks kind of like a lunch bag. The vellum one I just left open. Now for this one, I adhered everything on the front the same way, and I'm gluing that tiny little heart into his hand so it looks like he's holding it. Here's where I'm going in with that bone folder to really make sure that those are secured to the front. I like the Stick It double-sided adhesive for adding those little intricate die cuts. Okay, so I'm using my Spectrum Noir shimmer pen to add some shimmer to the thankful die cuts. And I'm using glossy accents to add some shine, a clear coating to the little hearts just for some added interest. I also put a tiny little dot of glossy accents on his eyes and his nose so those stand out too. And here you can see the shine that you get from the glitter pen and the glossy accents. So there you have a way you can take your envelopes and create cute little gift bags in no time at all. If you are interested in the products that I use, they are linked below in my YouTube description and you can go to my blog for much more information. In the middle are some other videos that might be of interest to you. They're similar to what we did today. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll return again soon. Have a wonderful day.